We are your home theater and AV questions answered. This is AV Rant. Want your home theater or AV question answered by Tom and Rob? Send it to question at avrant.com. Welcome to AV Rant. I'm Tom Antry and I'm here with Rob H. Ron. This is uh, out of Las Vegas. Ron is cons- is thinking of adding and upgrading some stuff in his living room home theater setup. Total budget for everything is six grand. This is this one's a little bit difficult here, I gotta be honest with you. Mm. I did read this question and Doke say so you're showing the picture right now? I'll show the diagram. Here it is. I don't know what that X is. What's that? Is that the that fan? That is the ceiling fan. Okay. So There's the purple large X circles the are the speakers that are in the ceiling, right? Uh, the circles are the speakers in the ceiling. The red squares are where he might put surround and surround back speakers. There is a blue square, which is the subwoofer in the front right corner. And then there's a big rectangle that's his couch and a big yellow X above that couch, which is his ceiling fan. That's right. And if you're, well, you can't see this, then I'm not. And the, the back of the room apparently is completely open. He has no hope of pressurizing this space. Right. So the front right corner, just in front of that, is a wet bar. On the left, there's a fireplace kind of to the left of the couch that's right so first for the visual part he'd like to add a projector and electric roll down screen in the 120 to 135 inch uh, range to drop down in front of his 80 inch Vizio flat panel light output is high priority as the room is not fully dark during the day and he's thinking 1080p as he sits 11 feet away so 4k wouldn't matter unless 4k or wobble k models with hdr will get him better color and such when the room is dark at night so what do we suggest for projector and motorized screen uh the motorized screens that we recommend are elite so you're going to, yes, go to elite, elite screens to, to check those out and for the projector you will have to ask rob luckily he's here so yes so i mean uh first on the screen front i'm going to suggest in this case that you do go for what they would call an ambient light rejecting screen because he's saying that that's important to him he's never going to have full light control in this room and Elite does offer such a thing. Uh, right now, it's called their Cinegray 5D. Because, of course, there are five dimensions. Sure. Um, but Cinegray, fi- Cinegray 5D, uh, it works quite nicely. Uh, it does have the, the gray tint to it so that if you have light in the room, that's that's what black is. Look at the screen without anything playing. That's black. That's as black as things can be. So having the gray tint to it does mean a deeper black level when you have some ambient light. Uh, but overall, it's a nice screen. You can get it in a tab tension design. It's their Starling tab tension screen with the Cinegray screen material. That's going to run you. The retail price on that is $1,400, but being elite, you can find it for less than that. Hmm. Um, so count on somewhere in the 12 to $1,300 range for, I would suggest the 120 inch size uh, if you're sitting 11 feet away. That gives you a nice 43 degree field of view. I think that'll, that'll work well. And it having going from 120 to 135, it's surprising how much more light you need to light up the larger screen. So with your seating distance, 120 inch standard size, the price stays reasonable. The light output for the projector stays more reasonable. That all works nicely. For the projector, if you can swing $2,700, so we're talking spending a roughly four grand on the projector and screen together, right? Which might. I was going to say, don't be... we only have $6,000 for everything? Yeah, but I forget what all else he wanted to get. All right. <laughs> Because I don't think the speakers he was looking at were super expensive. Uh, He's got the rest. So if you're okay with spending upwards of four grand for the for the screen and the projector together, uh, then Epson's fifty forty UB is a really nice projector. Now, are you going to get the super bright highlights in HDR with ambient light in the room? No, but you will get the cinema color. Hmm. That's that's the important thing that it gives you that lesser models don't. Even the home cinema four thousand, which is twenty two hundred dollars, so it's five hundred dollars less. It's not as bright and it doesn't have as wide a range of colors because it doesn't have that same cinema filter going on. So the fifty forty UB really nice choice. If that's all too expensive, then yeah, go down to like an Epson thirty seven hundred or something like that. Yeah. Light Canon. Yeah. 1080p instead. You're not going to get the cinema color. You're not going to get HDR, but an absolute light Canon and less expensive. Yeah, so I did a review of that one, didn't I? The 3700. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, I think yours might have been the 3500 that the no. 37 replaced, but oh, so, I thought that I had the 37. I don't remember. Anyways, doesn't something matter. Like that. Something like that. Yeah. 
really bright. So yeah, uh, regardless, I'm going to suggest an Epson. That also makes the next thing things that are coming up with uh, mounting it uh, less of a hassle. So he says for the screen itself, he's concerned about how he will mount it. Since it needs to be out from uh, the wall to drop in front of the Vizio, but he has 10 foot ceilings. He doesn't want to have to look up the screen. So those are his mounting options. Uh, with every single projector, I mean projection screen, they realize you're not going to be able to mount it directly to the wall what would be the point of that so they're usually have an l bracket that they can give that you they you can buy that will mount to the ceiling kind of flush now depending on how far out you're going to put it if you still want to mask it on top of that you can take molding the molding that's on your ceiling you know going around your room and then build like a little shelf around this thing have it come straight out to there and then back again then you'd have to attach to you know near that molding or at least some place where the ir can be if it's ir because it's going to do motorized that so that it can still be seen you can kind of you know kind of hide the whole thing and have it come down so there should yeah, be an if, l bracket of some sort yeah if you want to mount this to the wall that an l bracket lets you you know have the distance so that it'll be in front of your television now you can mount this to the ceiling. For one thing, you can just get extra drop, which is just the black fabric that's above the actual screen material. Mm -hmm. uh, and with that Starling that I mentioned from Elite Screens, they even mentioned that extra drop is easily available. Right. So if you just need more black material so that you can mount the case to the ceiling and have it drop down, that'll work. Or you can just suspend it from the ceiling with some chain or some you know aircraft uh, grade cable or something like uh, that. I you like can. That part. No, yeah, but I mean, it's, it's doable. I know that's kind of so, that's kind of hokey. Sorry. There's no real reason why you can't mount it to the ceiling, uh, but if you, for whatever reason, you just absolutely don't want to mount it to the ceiling, you can use the L brackets to mount it to the wall and have it hang out. You know, mine was mounted to the, the ceiling when I did it, and it was no yep. problem. You know, you yep. just had enough black drop, and then it, and then you set yep. it to where you want it to be, and then it remembers, and that's, that's it. right. Uh, he's also concerned about mounting the projector as there is a ceiling fan nine feet five inches from the screen wall that hangs down 29 inches from the ceiling which is right where he expects the projector will need to be and his wife says the fan cannot be moved your wife is incorrect you can tell her i told you that <laughs> you can move a fan uh he might be able to find some piece of furniture to put behind the couch to set up a projector on top of but that would be the least desirable option so what are our thoughts do we have a picture of this stuff we don't right oh we just have uh, not thing. the height stuff we just have the one diagram yeah um if you go for one of the projectors that I suggested from Epson uh, and you go for the 120 inch screen size that I suggested, the closest the lens of the screen, uh, the lens of the projector can be to the screen is actually 11 feet, 10 inches, almost 12 feet away. So that's behind your ceiling fan already. Yeah. And then the lens of the projector just needs to be even with the lowest point of the fan. Which, since you have a taller ceiling and this fan is over two feet down from the ceiling, yes, you will need a tube extension so that you'll have the thing mounted to the ceiling, you'll have a tube dropping down from the mount, and then the projector attached to that tube. But it can be behind the fan, and it only needs to be even with the lowest part of the fan. There's lots of lens shift range available on those Epson projectors. 29 inches is really really far from the ceiling i mean you can take that tube and get a shorter one i mean it, you're not moving the projector but you can be just moving it up just a little bit even if you're not moving it up all that much you know just to give yourself a little bit more height there too what he's going to raise the fan though yeah raise well? the fan a little bit oh it hangs 29 inches down it's ridiculous it's too little Make it a bigger but th th this should be this should be perfectly doable mounting the projector to the ceiling uh you, you you know you will need some extension regardless but yeah you just have to get it so that the lens of the projector is below the lowest part of the fan yeah. that's it yeah it'll be all right uh yeah you don't there's nothing you don't want to put the projector behind your couch I, i'm not like like a oh like directly like on yeah, a table like or on something. a table or something like that i think you would not gonna like that so for the audio part he would like to add some real surround speakers he's currently using in, uh, ceiling mounted speakers as rears and front heights they were installed by a builder he has no idea what brand model they are he liked to wall mount surrounds in the locations marked in the diagram the intimus which is a send right ascend intimus that's aperion aperion intimus 5b are on sale right now with matches intimus five towers and five seats uh center but he's open to other suggestions are they too large or heavy to wall mount? Okay, 
Uh, going back to the picture here, you can see he's got some just directly to the side of the couch and then some further back. I uh, like the idea of mounting these. I do yep. like the idea of mounting them to the sides, side walls. I don't think the surround backs are going to do much for you back there, to be honest with you. I mean, you could do I it. I mean, it's completely open back of the room, so this is a case where surround backs would make sense. Yeah, but they're not in the... I mean, but they're... They're not, they're not they're actually not, behind They're actually them. behind yeah. them. They're just more surrounds, basically. So yeah. I don't think... If it were me, I would stick with 5.1. I'm sorry. Or I would use those overhead speakers that you're now no longer going to be using uh, as surround backs because they're at least a little bit squished in and <laughs> they're above you now you could also use those for atmos but we'll talk about that later but uh i don't know that i would use the surround backs i would definitely go with those surrounds and maybe cheat your couch yeah and since you already have aperion these are the matching ones yeah, you can absolutely. absolutely wall mount them if you're if you want a really robust wall mount uh video sec has those side clamping wall mounts uh they can hold what is it like 50 something pounds those five five right, these those... don't come anywhere close yeah, yeah, to yeah. the weight limit um yeah so Absolutely, you can wall mount those bookshelf speakers and they'll match. Okay, oh, 33 pounds. Okay, but those those bookshelves are nowhere close to 33 pounds. So yeah. So after the, adding the wall surrounds, would the ceiling speakers work for Atmos? Would it even be worth it since he doesn't know anything about the quality of them? Uh, I think their quality is probably mediocre, but just fine for Atmos. <laughs> yep. <laughs> that being said, uh, they are really, really wide, you know, yeah. compared to what you're, you're doing. I still be fine. I would I'd be fine with that. I would I would test them in both this as surround backs and as rear heights. That's what they top look like. Top rears. Top yeah. rears or whatever they call it. Yeah, top rear, sorry. And then the other ones are way up front, right? I, I have to keep scrolling back so I can see the picture. Yep. So they're up at the front of the room. So those could be, you could call them front heights like you are right now. You can yeah. call them top front. I mean top fronts can be anywhere from thirty to fifty five degrees elevation. Yeah. So either then, will work. That center one you would just not plug in. To anything great which he, he already he's not using it so yeah. uh i have to scroll back down his receiver he <laughs> would like uh, a receiver that will last through upgrading to 4k in the future even if he stays in ap for now and if the ceiling speakers will work for atmos and he'll need that otherwise 7.1 or 2 would be enough so what should he buy okay i'm gonna make a, might be a more controversial suggestion than i've ever made on this podcast before i would not suggest worrying about what you might do in the future with 4k and all these other things you know what you're going to have right now that's what i would buy for i would not worry about atmos i mean atmos. i would not worry about you know hdr you know all this other stuff he might be getting an hdr projector he might be what i'm saying is that you want, know what you have or what you're about to buy and then buy the receiver that fits that need because you're probably well, going to be almost immaterial. Because pretty much all of the ones that are out there right now at least support HDCP. This is just a general too. thing. I get we yeah. get too many people who are like, "Well, what can I buy that'll make me future proof?" Nothing. <laughs> Nothing makes you future proof. All the things that say are future proof, they're not because no one knows what the future is going to be. They're going to change something. I mean, I bought the X four thousand. I was like, "Man, at most that's never going to take off." And that, here we are. <laughs> here we are. Like four years later, I'm like thinking to myself, "I should have gotten that most receiver." But even if I had, it wouldn't have HDMI two point oh and HTCP two point two and all this other stuff. There is no future proofing. So get what you want, which means you're going to want something that is going to be five point however many. Uh, and then you're going to have four four overhead speakers. So, mm -hmm. you know, you're going to need a nine-channel capable receiver that has uh, the very good room correction because you have a challenging room, we'll say. So Odyssey Multi-QXC32 with the uh, sub, sub, sub EQ. Uh, or the RSC version of uh, the Yamaha. Y Pow from Yamaha. So one of those... Yeah, I'd say get the Marantz SR6011. That's that's a high value. It's about $850 right now on accessories for less. Uh, has the 9 amps built in, can expand to 11 speakers if you really do want those surround backs. So that's that's got everything you need um, for, a, for a very reasonable price if you get it from accessories for less. And yeah, if you go with that and the intimate speakers that you talked about, then you do have $4,000 left in the budget for the projector and the screen. Right. The $6,000. So it, it that all works out. Yeah.
Once your question answered, send it to question at avrant.com. A.V. Rant. Now go out and listen to something.